Yeah, I got a call pretty much out of the blue um, from the January the 6th committee. They wanted, they wanted a storyteller. And while they were brilliant, they were brilliant lawyers. Storytelling for a mass audience is not what they do. Do you want the truth? Are you tired of being so confused? You feel like you're more f***ed up than the lies on the evening news. Well, just step right in. We can talk about it all as friends. And if you want, we can hug and kiss and make up for the party. Welcome to The Dumb Show. Still point, S-T-I-I-L-P-O-I-N-T. The Don't Unfriend Me Band. Let's get it out in the open. Yes, the January 6th committee was full of clowns. But in a stunning revelation that shocked precisely no one, the erstwhile guardians of democracy on the January 6th committee have come clean in a PBS documentary. It's called Democracy on Trial about their groundbreaking strategy to merge politics with primetime entertainment. Thompson's committee had gathered a trove of information. The challenge, what to do with it. The one thing that we knew was the information that we have is compelling. The thing we needed to do was tell that to the American people in a compelling way. Yes, in a move that would make even the most jaded Hollywood executive blush, Key members of the committee have confessed that their solemn inquiry into the Capitol riot was, in fact, an elaborate election year extravaganza, masterminded by none other than former ABC News president James Goldston. So that's why we brought in a former president of ABC News. Yeah, I got a call pretty much out of the blue um, from the January 6th committee. They wanted, they wanted a storyteller. And while they were brilliant, they were brilliant lawyers. Storytelling for a mass audience is not what they do. To bring in a guy like this who would think outside the box really did prove to be fruitful. And it was Goldston who really began to envision this as, in a way, a kind of mini-series, that there would be sort of nine episodes and that these episodes would tackle particular themes. Because when in doubt, Why not turn a congressional investigation into a binge-worthy miniseries of Netflix? Adam Kinzinger, the Illinois congressman turned media personality, spilled the beans with the kind of candor you would expect from someone who's found a second career as a CNN commentator. He mused on the need to present their findings in a compelling way to the American people because, as everyone knows, Nothing says compelling quite like the narrative flair of a network news producer. Attack on the Capitol. The investigation. The first hearing was primetime television. As the nation is about to witness a defining moment, the first hearing before the country, the results of the January 6th investigation. This is an extraordinary moment in American history. When it came to that first hearing, we knew how high the stakes were. Is about to hold its first prime time hearing. We were either gonna, you know, make people realize that this was important, you know, or once once you've lost them, you've you've lost them for good. And Goldston, oh, he was just the man for the job, receiving a call pretty much out of the blue, quote, to transform the drab proceedings of legal testimony into something the masses would actually want to watch. Because if there's one thing a congressional committee lacks, it's the ability to tell a story that doesn't put its audience to sleep. Robert Draper, the voice of reason from the New York Times Magazine, praised the decision to hire Goldston as a stroke of genius. Under Goldston's visionary leadership, the hearings were envisioned as a miniseries complete with episodes and themes. Because who needs the rule of law when you can have ratings? On the evening of June 9th, 8.01 p.m., the doors opened. My heart was beating pretty fast on June 9th. And it it was a real question uh, of, is this going to work or not? All right, everybody, here we go. Five on the line, please. I'm in this tiny control room right up the stairs from Cannon Caucus. And we count down to, to the start of the hearing. And at that point, What can you do? Here we go. In three, two, one. The select committee to investigate the January 6th attack on the United States Capitol will be in order. 
without objection. We wanted to make sure that this was a presentation that would grab the audience and hold on to them. Chairman Thompson loved to say, it's got to pop. However, despite their best efforts to jazz up the proceedings with all the trappings of a summer blockbuster, the series premiere's ratings were less than stellar. It turns out that offering free ice cream to encourage viewership wasn't enough to make the American public tune in to the saga of democracy's near demise. Maybe you could offer hamburgers and get a shot, too. Liz Cheney, the ousted Wyoming representative, turned the committee's work into her own personal legacy project, reflecting in her memoir on the strategic hiring of Goldston to dramatize the hearings, presumably in hopes of swaying the electoral tide. Her efforts, much like her re-election campaign, were met with overwhelmingly indifference. In the end, the committee's foray into the world of television was a sobering reminder that while you can dress up a congressional hearing as a must-see TV production, the American public might just choose to watch something else. It implies that the truth is not compelling enough on its own, and it needs to be embellished or manipulated to capture the public's interest or sway their opinions. This approach risks undermining the credibility of not just the committee's findings, but also the democratic institutions that depend on public trust to function effectively. And regarding the committee's deeply sincere aspirations to avert future (coughs) insurrections with their sage production, oh, they certainly provided a delightful twist in the narrative, to be sure. But alas, I think we're safe until we put up razor wire and fences and walls yet again around our capital, but certainly not the U.S. border. Folks, thanks for watching the Don't Unfriend Me show. I believe that you might want to follow. Like, share, and subscribe. Give us a follow. Keep in touch with us. We appreciate it. And you can do that by following at The Dumb Show across all social media. You can find us on Spreely TV and thedumbshow.com if you want to pick up a Red Friday shirt. By the way, happy Red Friday. Remember, everyone deployed. You can do that at thedumbshow.com. And tell them Matt sent you by saving 10% using code DUMB10. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tonight at 7 o'clock. Olivia, myself, Leroy, Amy, Mike, I think we're all here in the house tonight. And we can't wait to see you. Talk to you soon. Adjusting transmitter output. This is the Don't Unfriend Me Show with your hosts, Matt, Leroy, Amy, Olivia, and Mike. Geopolitics, military analysis, and election coverage. Coming to you live on the Spreely.tv network and all major social media channels at The Dumb Show. Honest, direct, unfiltered. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern. We can agree, we can disagree, just don't unfriend me.